There she is. I got my birthday present to me from uh, trainroll.com last week. 1943 Spirit, and now it'll pair up nicely with my O-Scale George Bush. I don't know why my smoke unit's on. There we go. So anyways, uh, this is just gonna be a quick video on this uh, particular engine. This is the MTH Premier line. So this is their high-end model, or their highly detailed um, Spirit. SD78, well it's AH, but it's an SD78 body frame shell. Um, and overall, the model is very, very good. It's well detailed. I'm actually real surprised, yet I am very, very thrilled to see that MTH is going above and beyond to make sure that this is detailed up to their premier standards. Um, now I've got an HO and an O-scale version, but today we're just going to go over the O-scale one today. Um, without any further ado, let me go on ahead and just turn on the sounds. Using the MTH DCS remote. Turn that. Uh, this is the new release. I got this when I had my YouTube video up of the Christmas train that I had put four loops around and I was controlling it with just this and the Wi-Fi unit. Um, both these L-scale tracks use my MTH DCS TIU. Uh, this HO track is just a DC track because I got some old DC trains that I just like to run around. But mainly this is the O-scale railroad. This is what I've got going on here, and I'll show you guys real quick before I proceed on with the overview of the 1943. So as you see there, I got a big O-scale steam engine. That was one my grandpa uh, had one of the two. And of course now um, I've inherited them. So there's another one, and there's kind of the Anheuser-Busch uh, beer train set, because he retired from Anheuser-Busch. And there's one of his DC trains right there. And a couple other projects that I'm working on, I'm actually going to get into an O-scale install. I'm going to put a Lionel TMCC uh, third rail board. It's an aftermarket uh, component that you can put into these older uh, DC AC power Lionel diesels from the 90s. And I can put sound in it later. Here's another MTH. Uh, I got this from Christmas 2. Unfortunately, this is having some speaker troubles, and I'm just going to get to work on that. I actually got to put a gasket over it because it's vibrating real bad. Um, and you got to really turn the volume way down in order for it to stop vibrating. So I got to find a way to seal around the cone and place it back in the baffle. And hopefully it will stop that. But anyhow, uh, moving on with the layout. So as you see, I use MTH and the Lionel Fast Track. Lionel Fast Track on the outside radius is, I think, 048. And the real king is 042. So both these radiuses will be acceptable for any MTH or Lionel uh, locomotive that needs a somewhat of a medium-sized radius in order to operate. Um, some of the other odds and ends. And I can come over here and show you the operation. So we're going to look under here. As you see, here is the operation. That is the brains of the outfit. I've got my DCS TIU and then the Wi Fi module sitting on top. The DC power pack, it runs the HO scale loop. Um, and it looks like we also got the two uh, MTHZ bricks, and then I got a third that's powering the auxiliary connection. I'm using both the fixed out one and two ports on the TIU here in order to operate my MTH protosound equipment. Um, it's a bit of a mess. So without further ado, let's go on ahead and head back to the 1943. Let me see if I can prop my phone like this, which I probably can. There we go. Perfect. So now using my remote, we're going ahead and start it up. Oops. There we go. All right, so that's just using the number three button as a regular startup procedure. There's an extended startup sequence if you just wanted to maybe throw in a little bit um, as to what I'm looking for. The extended startup sequence on the DCS remote, I don't know if I can show you, is 
SSU on the soft key menu here, so it'll be under soft key S2. It's like an extended solo sequence of a crew maybe coming on board, and you hear the background sounds of them starting it up, chatting the way, stuff like that. Uh, MTH did a great job on that. Basic um, commands are the bell, sounds I should say. So nice E bell ring, and here's the horn. And you hold it down for however long you want. It's pretty responsive. It's maybe a second delay after you let off the whistle horn button. Uh, so you got other miscellaneous stuff. You got smoke control. You got, uh, of course, headlight. Turn it on and off. You also got ditch lights. So I'll probably come around here and show you. There we go. So right after you hit the horn. Alright. Now what we're gonna do is go to the passenger freight announcements on this. And then you gotta hit the direction button. And it goes through its sequence. Local freight calling dispatcher over. This is Dispatcher. You want clearance out of the yard, don't you? That's correct, over. Then you keep hitting the direction button until it gets through the entire uh, passenger freight announcement sequence. The bell will ring and then it'll automatically go in the direction that it was going previously before you hit the direction. I've got good news for you. You're next in line. I just need to check and see if track two is clear. Stand by, over. Dispatcher standing by. Okay, we had freight on number two. He's clear. Uh, there's a foreman who wants time on track number one soon. Okay, I can put you on track one right now if you're ready to go. Over. I'm ready now. Over. Dispatcher, I've got a proceed signal and I'm moving out. Over. Roger that. Have a safe day. Dispatcher out. Local freight out. Alright, so as you just saw there, the last direction that you had set up in the previous before you hit the uh, passenger freight announcements on all of the TH engines, whether it's Rail King, Mirrorline, One Gauge, HO, stuff like that, the system's automatically going to know which direction it was facing before it stopped and started its sequence. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. I know it also smokes too, but I don't have any fluid in there at the moment because I just brought it out of the box, wanted to run it. Um, the thing about some of these new Protosound. Uh, three locomotives of the recent ones in the last couple of years they have micro capacitors on the board that allow electricity to of course maintain if it were to hit a dead zone so they got rid of the 9 volt battery I think in the late 2010s um, is what I heard and they put the capacitors on because technology was there for it so yeah that's about it I love it it's a nice birthday gift um, I'll probably have a later video of the George Bush it's sitting over there, maybe running with it later on my YouTube channel next time. But I'll go ahead and catch you guys later. Uh, comment below on this video. And thank you all for watching the What's Neat podcast. Uh, still going strong at it. And I am still going to try to push myself to make more What's Neat videos for the monthly show and try to get more content on the podcast. Take care, guys. Have a good night.